Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to eight or more player game, Fiction, designed by Peter C. Hayward and published by Allplay, who helped sponsor this video. A secret word needs to be guessed, but can the lying librarian's clues be trusted? Not entirely, so join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, pick one player to be the librarian, giving them this fold-out board, a dry erase marker, and these double-sided clue tokens, which I'm setting into a tray that I have. They then take a book card from this deck in any way you like, perhaps randomly or even going through and picking the card that they want. The other players can see the back of the chosen card, but only the librarian can examine the other side. From the card they've chosen, the librarian will pick any one of the words highlighted in yellow, and these will always have exactly five unique letters. The red highlighted words are for when you want to play a more challenging mode that we'll talk about later. In this case, we'll choose the word smile. The librarian now writes their chosen word into the spaces for it here at the top of their board. But they must keep everything on their board a secret from the other players. So you might use part of the box here to help keep it private, or perhaps use something larger if you need a little more privacy. The other players, known as the guessers, now collect this alphabet board, a dry erase marker, these 10 guess boards separated by color, and these three double-sided fact fiction tokens. You'll also need a 10-minute timer for the librarian, so consider using someone's phone or anything that would be suitable. And that's the setup. In fiction, the guessers will have 10 chances to deduce the secret word the librarian is hiding, and they'll do this by proposing what they think the word might be. The librarian will then give them information about their guess, but they will always lie about one of the details. This is why they're called the librarian. The guessers will have to see if they can separate fact from fiction to determine the secret word before their 10 guesses or the time runs out. The game begins with a step known as the prologue, where the librarian must honestly share one of the letters that appears in their word, but they do not say where in the word it occurs. For our example, let's say they decide to share the letter M. Then they start the 10 minute timer. This kicks off the first round, and each round is divided into two phases, starting with the guess phase. Here, the guessers pick a five letter word they think the librarian's secret word could be, taking one of the blue colored guess boards and writing it into these spaces. Now, when coming up with the guesses, they can use their alphabet board to help. For example, they know that M is in the word because the librarian had to give them that as a clue. So perhaps they would circle this as a reminder. As they rule out letters later, they might cross those ones out. And as they start to determine where letters go in the secret word, they can begin writing them in here. Either way, they need to pick a word for their guess, and it can be any five-letter word that is not a proper noun where all five letters are unique. It's also worth pointing out, the words highlighted in yellow that the librarian had to pick from, these can be pluralized, but they will never be a very uncommon word, so you can expect the word to be something you'd be familiar with. After some discussion, let's say the guessers decide to settle on the word flame. Once their guess is written, they pass it to the librarian, who then pauses the timer. It's now time for the deceive phase of the round, where the librarian will have some things to do. But during this time, the guessers can continue talking amongst themselves, discussing what they think the word might be. The librarian will do their work in secret, but to make things a little easier for you to see, I'm going to remove this privacy box. Now, since this is the first round, in the row labeled one, the librarian now writes the guesser's guess, which in this case, as we know, is the word flame. They then compare each letter in each space to the letters in the matching spaces of their actual word. In the spots labeled with a lock here, they'll record one of three possible symbols. If the letter in the guessed spot does not appear anywhere in the secret word, they mark an X, which will do, because in our secret word, there are no Fs. If the guessed letter does appear in the secret word, but in a different spot, you mark a tilde symbol, or as I like to call it, a wavy line. And we do that here because the guessers were right. An L is in the word, but it doesn't go in this space. Since A is not in the secret word, we mark an X. An M is in the secret word, but in a different space, so we'll put another wavy line. And if a letter is in the word and in the right position, we record a check mark, which we do for the letter E. 
And those are all the possible symbols the librarian can record. With the correct symbols marked into the lock spaces, the librarian now records those exact symbols in the spaces directly below, showing a megaphone symbol, but they must change exactly one of them. For example, maybe I'll keep the first four symbols exactly the same. But where I put a check mark for the E, I might put either an X or a wavy line. I'll put a wavy line. The symbols you mark on the top row are known as the honest clues, and the symbols you put on the bottom spaces are known as the public clues. The only difference between them is that exactly one of the symbols in the public row is different from the honest row. And it's always a good idea at this time to double check that you've marked all the symbols correctly according to the rules I've just explained. The librarian now adds clue tokens from the supply beneath each letter of the guest board exactly matching the symbols in their public row. So an X, a wavy line, an X, a wavy line, and another wavy line. Then they give the guesser's board back to them, this time with those tokens underneath, and then they start the timer again. And that ends the first round, but the second round begins immediately with the guessers taking a new guess board and writing a new word as their second guess. Of course, this time they have some new information. It's not perfect information because they know the librarian is lying about exactly one of these clues. That said, they know at least some of these letters must be in the word because three of them are marked as in the word but in the wrong place. And even if the librarian was lying about one of them, at least two of them have to be in the word. To help show this, they might put question marks on both the L and the E here on their alphabet board. So I'll put a question mark here and here. The M they know is definitely in the word because that was the first mandatory clue that had to be given honestly by the librarian at the start of the game. For the F and the A, they might choose to put an X with a question mark because again, at least one of these must be right, which would mean at least one of them isn't in the word. With this information, maybe they decide that for their second round guess, they'll write the word maple. As they pass their new guess to the librarian, the timer is again paused. The librarian records the guest word, this time on the second row, since it's the second round. And again, they mark the honest results on the lock spaces. So this time, a wavy line, an X, another X, a check, and another check. Now they record these symbols again on the public row, making exactly one change. Maybe to cover the fact that they lied last time about this E, they decide to mark it the same way, which again is a lie, but this way it seems consistent. And that means all of the other letters must be marked correctly. The librarian then adds the related tokens from the supply to the guest board, and then passes the guest board and those tokens back to the guessers. The timer is once again started, and with that, you've now seen two example rounds. However, the guessers have something else they can do during any round that we need to learn about. Before making a new guess, they can choose to use one of these fact fiction tokens they have, passing it to the librarian, and pointing at any one letter from their most recent guess. Maybe they'll use this now and point to the L. The librarian must then put this token next to that letter, truthfully stating whether the token they placed with it is indeed honest, by setting it to its fact side, or if it was a lie, flipping it to its fiction side. In this case, the clue was truthful, so they'd set it to the fact side. And this means the guessers can now say for sure that L is in the secret word at this exact spot. So this would be a good time to mark that on their alphabet board, writing the L here. Not only that, they now know that one of these four other clues must be the lie. The guessers only have three of these fact or fiction tokens to use over the course of the entire game, and at most can only use one each round. With that, rounds will continue until either the guessers have made five guesses or the 10 minute timer has run out, which brings them to halftime. Here, the guessers will discard any unused blue guess boards they may have, and you'll only have leftovers if the timer ran out. But either way, for the rest of the rounds, the guessers will now use the tan-colored guess boards, and the librarian will record those guesses in the matching tan-colored lines of their board. You then reset the timer for another 10 minutes and start it to begin the next round. And just so you know, the timer should always be publicly visible during the game, so all players know how much time is remaining. 
As rounds continue, if the guessers ever correctly write the secret word on their board and pass it to the librarian, the librarian does not record anything behind their screen. They just stop the game and announce that the guessers are correct. In that case, the guessers all win and the librarian loses. On the other hand, if the guessers run out of these guess boards or the second 10 minute timer expires, the guessers lose and the librarian wins. The game also includes optional rules if you want an even bigger challenge, and you can mix and match these as you like. One option is to give the guessers only one fact or fiction token to use at the start of the game. Another option is to use an eight minute timer per half instead of 10 or you can introduce red highlighted words. These are also found on the cards the librarian will take at the start of the game and always contain duplicate letters, allowing the guessers to also include duplicate letters in their guesses. And these words may also be a little less common. You otherwise follow the same rules, but there are a couple of exceptions which I'll illustrate now. And let's assume our secret word is a miss and the first guess was again. If the guess contains duplicate letters, in this case two A's, but the secret word only contains a single instance of that letter, check to see if either guessed letter is in the correct spot. If so, mark it with a check and the other with an X. On the other hand, let's look at this example here where again we have two A's, but there's only one A in the secret word. If neither of those letters are in the right place, Mark the first one that appears going from left to right with a wavy line, and the second one you mark with an X. If you need a reminder of the different options for playing at a harder difficulty level, you'll find them here on the back of the rule book. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play fiction. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.